Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder and welcome to the channel. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, go to all the corners, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all this testing. And also please make sure to join us nightly, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on my channel for the live feed. You got questions? Hey Richard, what turbo should I use? What camshaft should I use? How does this intake manifold work? On that live feed, you will find all the answers. But today we're talking about my favorite subject, turbocharging, specifically turbo cams. So here are the questions. Richard, does a camshaft help an LS? Well, yes, it does. That's really not the right question. What about a turbo cam? Does a turbo cam help a turbo LS? Again, yes, it does. And that's not really the question. Hey, does a camshaft gain power on the top? Does it lose power on the bottom? Again, that's really not the question. We see that time and time again. Well, Richard, if those aren't the questions, what is the question? Let's take a look. Okay guys, now we're going to take a look at my favorite subject, which is turbocharging, whether it's an LS or a little three-cylinder sprint turbo motor. doesn't mean our turbos are awesome. We're going to take a look at cam timing and how it affects turbos and how it affects the NA power output relative to the turbos. But more importantly, we're going to ask the right question here because if you followed this channel at all and take a look at any of the videos, watch any of the live feeds, please come join me on the live feeds nightly at 7 p.m. But if you watch any of that, you already know kind of what's going to happen. If we take a stock cam and we run it NA and then we put a camshaft upgrade in it, typically what happens if we put a bigger cam in, it loses power down low and gains power up top. Exactly the same thing happens under boost. The thing that gets multiplied under boost is if we lose low speed torque down low from a, putting a bigger cam in, you also lose boost response. And we kind of know that that's going to happen, at least you should if you've watched this channel. And if you don't, you're going to learn this because I'm going to show you exactly what happens. But knowing that this happens, we're not asking the right question. So we're going to get to the right question in just a second. But this was our first test motor, 4.8 liter. It was a stock block, stock crank, stock rods. It did have forged pistons on it. It had a stock cam, heads, intake manifold, all that stuff. We had bigger injectors in it. And we ran it NA with the inch and three-quarter long tube headers and a Holly HP management system. And it produced 336 horsepower and 345 foot-pounds of torque. Here is what happened when we added a uh, turbo kit to it. We, we also, you might notice in the description, we also had replaced the stock head sometime during this testing. This was a whole test regiment that we did. We had put a set of TrickFlow 205 heads on it. Doesn't really affect what we're talking about because we're really looking at the bottom part of the curve. But the head upgrade was worth a little bit of power under boost. But you see now uh, at run under boost and I'll go ahead and put the boost curves up here or, or put the boost amounts up here 574 horsepower and 566 foot pounds you can see the stock cam works very well under boost now let's take a look and see what happens when we did a we did a camshaft upgrade so we installed the Brian Tooley Racing stage one turbo cam and run at the same boost level we see a big jump in power so we went from 574 horsepower to 500 or 648 horsepower, so 70, 70, 75 horsepower with the cam change. And that's what, kind of what we've come to expect. The other part of the curve, if we look before 4,900 RPM, we also expect this, even on a stage one cam on, on the 4.8, we're gonna lose power down low, which is exactly what we did. Now we see this no matter what the cam is, whether it's a turbo cam or a truck cam or an NA cam or a nitrous cam, if we put a bigger cam, meaning more duration, more intake and exhaust duration, if we put a bigger cam in, this is typically what we have. We trade power, we, we trade the big gains that we get on top for less power down low. And less power down low will make the turbo less responsive to get up to boost. But here's the question. If we take a look at this dynograph, we see that even with the camshaft that loses power down low compared to the stock camshaft, we still have a huge jump in torque. So we went from, on the NA combination, we went from 318 foot-pounds. We went all the way up to 480 foot-pounds. So that's a really big jump in torque. And so the question is sometimes, yeah, does a camshaft that adds more power up top and loses power down low, is that really a bad choice on a turbo combination? Maybe not. Take a look at the big torque gains. So the question is, am I still getting a whole bunch of torque from the turbo? And the answer is yes, providing you're running a turbo 
that would be sized to be responsive down there. And you're not trying to run like a GT55 turbo on a 4.8 with one of these cams in it to where it doesn't ever spool up. But if you size the turbo for the kind of power output that you're looking for, you can get it to respond. Even if the cam is a little bit softer, it's probably still enough. Now that we've checked out our what happened on our 4.8 liter, let's take a look and see what happens on a 5.3. So we've taken a look at what happens on a cam upgrade on a 4.8 liter and we were specifically looking at the low speed torque production because if you've watched any of the videos that I've done or any of the live feeds, I constantly harp on the fact that you need a mild camshaft for a turbo so it spools the turbo up and, and that works better. And it really does for the street because the drivability is much better. There are a lot of benefits from that and ultimately the turbo is going to kind of dictate the power output. But I wanted to illustrate for guys that have put a stage one or stage two turbo cam in there. That doesn't mean that you've made a mistake. In fact, these, these cams, the two that I've tested, this is going to be a stage two cam from Brian Tooley. But these turbo cams work just fine, but as will lots and lots of other camshafts. But again, a lot of times with these combinations, we're just asking the wrong question. The, is one cam better than the other? Does it, does one make more low speed power? Yeah. But that's not really the question. The question is, okay, maybe I have one that makes a lot more power out of the top and still has enough down low. So let's take a look and see if this is another example of that. This is a 5.3 liter, an LM7. A little bit bigger than the 4.8. We can run a little bit more camshaft. It had uh, 706 heads. We put head studs on it. It had a Trailblazer SS intake manifold, a fast 92 millimeter throttle body. Um, it had the... LM said the early LM, the LM7 5.3 or early truck cam, early six liter truck cam. This one had inch and seven eighths headers. Um, again, Holly HP management system and big injectors so that we could run enough, uh, you know, so we had enough fuel to run under boost. And our, our otherwise, you know, the stock internal stuff made 359 horsepower and 384 foot pounds of torque. So it did really well. And here's what happened when we ran our uh, turbo on the stock cam. Again, just like with the 4.8, nice curve, you know, good average power, makes peak power at like 55 or 5600 in this case. Um, and, it, and it did very well. I'll go ahead and put the boost numbers up there so, so that you guys can see this. This, whenever I show guys um, what happens with running the stock cam because everybody thinks oh i need to run a turbo cam well this stock cam is a turbo cam like every other one and it works just fine and you can run boost on it, even though it wasn't designed for that but it will still make good power and it'll make power in the rpm range that it did when it was na and I, as you can see it works very very well but what happens when we add a, a cam upgrade in this case it was a brian tooley stage two turbo cam and i'll go ahead i'm going to go ahead and zing myself up here so we can maybe see a little bit better I'll go ahead and put the specs up for the Brian Tooley Stage 2 cam. It's, you know, a good bit bigger, obviously, than the tiny little stock LM7 camshaft. But it did very well. Peak power jumped up from right at 600 horsepower and 613 foot-pounds or 14 foot-pounds for the stock cam all the way up to 721 horsepower. And 644, yeah, 644 foot-pounds of torque at the same boost level. So it did very well. And again, we we are kind of used to having these kinds of big power gains. And you can see this thing was better from about 4,500 all the way up. It was softer down low, again, which we have come to expect. With the bigger 5.3 relative to the 4.8, you can get away with a little bit more camshaft. Personally, I would have picked the stage one for the 5.3 because we would have gotten everything that we needed out of the camshaft and still had all the low speed power. But again, let's take a look at that. Down low, if we look at 3,000 RPM. Uh, we had with the, we had 350 foot pounds and A. And then once we added boost to it, we had almost right at 500, 498.5 with the stage two turbo cam. So again, it will be softer down low because it is a bigger cam or despite the fact that it's a turbo cam, it will be softer down low than a stock cam, but <laughs> it still has, you know, a, a, an extra 150 foot pounds of torque. So even if, uh, even if it is a little bit softer, 150 foot pounds is 150 foot pounds and you'll be able to feel that the one thing i have to say is the on the engine dyno we have an artificial load on it which tends to improve uh boost response 
So this would work if you had the turbo size correctly and you could run it. But, but a 700 horsepower turbo would easily respond like this down low and it should work very well. So remember, the question isn't, is, is one cam more or less responsive down low? They are. <laughs> but the real question is, do I have enough? <laughs> do I have enough traction for 500 foot pounds of torque? Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what did we learn from our little adventure running the 4.8 and 5.3, both NA and then turbocharged, and then with a cam upgrade? And we saw, as we always see when we add a camshaft to an LS application, we get good power gains from a camshaft. And we also saw what we typically see when we gain lots of power on the top end. We will trade power down low. And then a lot of times that get magnified under boost because if we have less torque down low, then we will have possibly less boost response and then less boost equals even less torque. But that's not really the answer or that's not really the question. What happens is, did we gain torque down low from adding the turbo? And the answer is almost always yes. So we have to look at other things. Even if we pick the wrong cam <laughs> because it lost power down low, let's say we lost 30, 40, 50 foot pounds of torque because we had the less responsive camshaft with our turbo. If we gained 150 foot pounds of torque by adding the turbo, even though we had the wrong cam in it, <laughs> is that really a bad thing? Probably not. We have to ask ourselves, what is the gearing? What is the stall speed on the converter? What are we trying to get done here? What kind of traction do I have? I mean, if we added 150 foot pounds of torque, am I just going to have a traction problem anyway? So another 50 is really not going to benefit me. So we're taking a look at camshafts and I show you guys power curves and one of them is way, way more responsive than the other. That doesn't mean that you picked the wrong cam. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I will keep testing.